hello and welcome to Quick and Nerdy, an MSV-friendly channel dedicated to Veeam-powered solutions for Baz and Jazz offerings. As always, I'm your host, Brandon McCoy, Technical Advisor for North America, supporting our Veeam Cloud Service Provider community. And today, we are learning how to deploy and manage standalone agents directly from the service provider console. Now, this is perfect for scenarios where the customer doesn't have a Veeam server or maybe they are using a laptop and they're never in the local office and you'd like to back those endpoints up directly to the cloud. Now in the other videos we've already talked about the service provider console, how it connects to various Veeam products, but in this video we're going to look specifically at how they talk to agents. Now in the architecture here we see the service provider console on the right hand side there is one key installed on the service provider console for the total number of agents. So in this scenario, three different customers with a total of six different agents. So the service provider console has one license equal to six workstations or servers or some sort of combination of the two. Now there's a few different kinds of agents and so we need to get our terms right. So the first agent is the actual backup agent. So the service provider console supports Windows, Linux, and Mac, workstation, server, and the agent is the actual backup agent. The second agent is the management agent for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And this is the client side agent that's going to communicate with the service provider console through Cloud Connect. Now there will be one of these agents on every machine that you're backing up with the standalone agents. For some clarification, if a customer has a Veeam backup and replication server, even if that Veeam server is managing, let's say 20 agents, the management agent is only installed on that single VBR server. But in this scenario, the agents are talking directly to the service provider console, so there's a management agent on each one. Now the last agent is the management agent on your Cloud Connect server. So when we connected our service provider console to our Cloud Connect earlier, we installed a management agent automatically, and that is the receiving management agent talking to all of the standalone agents that are out there. That's all for the PowerPoints. Let's jump right into the demo. Here we are in the service provider console. And the first thing I'm going to do is go down to this discovery tab on the bottom left. Now the prerequisites here are I've already created a customer profile and checkboxed the relevant services I'd like to provide for this client. In this case, agents. So let's click discovery. And if you go all the way to the right, you'll see other actions. Click this checkbox, and here is the management agent that we talked about in the previous slide. If I check the drop down, I pick the OS specific that I'm backing up, so Windows, Linux, or Mac. Now, the management agent are bits that need to be installed on the client machine in order to connect to the service provider console, as we discussed. You can get this to your customer in a variety of ways. Now, from here, I'm actually logged into the service provider console over a web UI on the machine that I want to back up. So I would just simply download the Windows agent directly from here. Now, I can also send this to my client with an email link by creating this here and sending them the bits via a link. I can also send this link to them in the welcome email that is an optional component when you create the company profile. Just make sure you enter in an email address when creating that customer profile. Now, if you do not select a company when you create this link, it will be a generic download link. This is fine, but keep in mind that once you install the management agent, you will have to manually put in the address for Cloud Connect and the username and password that you have set for that client. Whereas if I select a customer here, all that information will be contained in the download link. So once I've got that management agent downloaded onto the machine I want to protect, I need to find the management agent here just to verify that it is connected. I am talking to my Cloud Connect. And another thing I can do is I can look at the uh, discovery tab here. These are all the machines that have a management agent on it. 
And now what I can do is I can select this machine and I can install a backup agent with specific credentials I need to uh, install the machine. I need those permissions. And these are some backup policies that I've already created. I can also create a new one right here. There's various ways in which you can uh, deploy the agent and then create the backup policy. For here, I'm just gonna go straight into discovery, push the agent out from here with a specific policy. Now these policies will go through real quick. I'm not going to go too much into each piece for the uh, sake of time, but we are going to just quickly go through um, the policy, whether it is visible to anyone who logs in or private. We'll give this a name. We'll call this Cloud Backup for Workstation. So maybe I'm assigning this to a specific customer, or maybe I'm just creating a template that can be assigned to different clients. Now, the server version of the license allows you to back up multiple times a day and also has application awareness, whereas a workstation agent, you can only back up once a day and does not have any application awareness. So you can put a server license on a workstation laptop because you want to back it up multiple times a day. So this is just the functionality and the cost for the license. Now we can back up the whole machine. We can do a volume or a file level of the machine. The destination, we can back up to a local NAS, a USB. We can also back up to a local Veeam server or uh, Cloud Connect. So maybe if we're backing up directly to Wasabi. Now, if you do a Cloud Connect repository and you're creating a blank template, when you assign this to a client, it will pick up which Cloud Connect repository that you've assigned to them automatically. And also, if you're creating a policy and you're doing it for a specific customer, of course, it will already know which Cloud Connect repository that they're going to. So the retention period, uh, you know, how long do you want to keep your backups, the advanced setting for synthetic fools, maybe you're doing weekly, monthly, yearlies, um, some storage level corruption and, and additional details. Uh, more of this can be found in the Help Center. just want to kind of get through this quickly. The backup quota, so how much space uh, is this particular client going to get for all of their computers, right? So the actual cloud usage for the company is defined in the profile. However, maybe this client has multiple employees or users, so they can all get a sub-repository for the total number of agents. Backup cache backs up the agent to itself in case it doesn't have an internet connection. Once you do establish that connection, it will automatically push to uh, the repository. The guest processing for the server, uh, SQL, VSS, the scheduling. So because I've selected the server version, I can do daily, I can do hourly. Now notice if I go back to operation mode and I select workstation, the guest processing tab has disappeared and the scheduling has been changed to daily only. That is the only difference between workstation and server agent. It is the same product, just a different license. So once I'm done here, I can push this policy as well as the Veeam agent for Windows in this case out. Um, I've already got that installed, so I'm just going to exit. Now, one other thing I'd like to show you is discovery. So discovered computers, once I've got that first machine connected to the console, I can use discovery rules for Windows and Linux, and I can search for other machines in that environment through probing. So I can check a box here, and I can use Active Directory scans, or I can um, choose to do a network IP address. Oops. So if I come here and I click the master agent, that's going to be the first agent that I installed. I can then come in and I have multiple ways of finding other machines in the environment and deploying an agent to all of them automatically. Now, if I go to backup jobs here, this is where I can see the agents that have already been installed. You can see that I've got some jobs running here. Uh, this is a failed job. I can find out why it failed. Um, I can also edit these jobs on the fly. So I can come in and I can change the destination, I can change the retention, all directly uh, from the console. Okay, a couple other things here. 
So if I check on one of these agents, this backup agent UI, this allows me to lock the agent GUI on the customer side so that they are not able to make any changes to existing jobs. All they can do is file level and volume level recovery as well as bare metal restores. Now speaking of recovery, at this time in version seven of the console, the only restore you can do is for uh, Veeam agent for Windows file level restore. So if I go to this protected data, this is a breakdown of the individual machines I'm backing up and the number of restore points. I can actually check one of these machines and click file level restore portal, find a restore point, select that restore point, and hopefully this won't take too long, but here we go. We see a couple volumes here. I can open these up and begin to explore and then restore the file or folders that I need. I can search for files and audit other activity that's happened here in the console. That's it for this video on agent management from the service provider console. I hope you found it valuable. Thank you for watching and until next time, keep on veeming in the free world.